So hi and welcome to another video and today we're going to be installing lizard skins on these mice. Now I'm just going to show you the install on one of the mice but at the end of the video I'll show you all these mice with these lizard skins on. Lizard skins also provide templates for you for when you buy these sheets so that you can cut them out perfectly for these mice. I'm going to use a scalpel and some scissors to do that. And then throughout this video I'll give you my thoughts on what I think of these lizard skins and we'll see what they're like at the end. They give a good variety of colours here. So one of the things you might think is, are these lizard skins only for the XM1, which is shown on the packet here, and they're not, they're for all these mice, all these templates. Or if you're a bit more adventurous, you can actually cut these sheets to fit the mouse of your choice that people have been doing with the bat tape or racket tape. Lizard skin provide anyway. And this is kind of how this has come about. So lizard skin have sent me all these out to install and give them a go and show you what they all look like on the mice. I'm definitely going to go with green because that goes with my channel. Should give this a go. I've done some other skins. I've done the Hotlines for Jeeper Wireless. I've also done True Grip as well. And I'll be looking to do the core pads very soon, as well as the Razor ones. So we're going to take these green ones. And we're going to install them on the Razor Viper here, and then we'll see what they like. These are the colors that I have. Green one, which looks cool. I like the green one. Green still not got yellow on. Red and black, pretty cool. Psychedelic orange one. Like a teal green here, turquoise. Dark red. Black and white that I've seen before. Jet black that we all like. The subtle version here in black. The gray and white version pattern, but like camo. And we've also got this blue one here. And then we've got the install template for the XM1, the Model D template, Model O template, G502 template, G603 template, Death Adder V2 template, the Razor Viper that we're going to install, and the Rokat 120 AMI as well, which I don't have. So as we said at the end of the video, I'll show you these skins on all the other mice as well. We're just going to show you the install on one of these, which is the Viper. And if you want to see the rest of the installs, I'll put it up on a different video and we'll see how these go. So there's five parts to the Viper. You've got the rear palm, left side, right side, and the two buttons as well. So let's give it a go on this Viper. These are obviously sheets that are 0.5 millimeters thick, which we'll test in a sec. They have this quite nice grip texture. And if you bought the tape before, you'll realize that sometimes you don't get the full width of a mouse button because the bat tape or racket tape is a little bit thinner. This one here is provided in full sheets. So you shouldn't have any gaps, but it is going to come down to how well you can cut it. There's around $15, so they're a little bit expensive. Some people I expect, given the tape's quite cheap. Some of the grip tape now, razor and core pads, not a lot coming around 10 to 15 dollars in UK pounds, so very similar to that kind of price. And this one here, you should get a little bit extra, hopefully, to do some other pads, which you'll see. The sticky back plate, you've got quite a nice rubber texture. Lizard skin's always been popular in the modding industry. Yeah, alcohol white pad, which is good to see. And then some graph paper. With a sticky back, can't quite get it off. Come in. And then in here as well, they provide you with a little bit of an instruction. So you can cut them yourself using this graph paper that you can see. This is what they're showing here. If you want to do a different mouse that they don't have the templates for, and then you stick it onto the mouse, and then you can cut the lizard tape around it so you don't waste it. But we have the templates today, so that's not an issue for us. Let's give the Viper a little wipe. It's nice to see they provided some alcoholic wipes in there. I've got some anyway using for lenses, but everyone doesn't always have them. Brand new Viper. <laughs> the Viper has some rubber anyway on the sides here. But I find it a bit slippy and a bit hard sometimes, so. You shall see. I also did the Viper so we can compare it against the Razor skins when I put those on as well. Get a little bit of a wipe, we're good. 
Now what we're going to have to do is cut out these templates here. So let's go and do that. So now we've cut the pieces out, what they're saying for us to do is to transfer it onto the grid tape here and then I guess we can make sure they fit and then we can stick that on top of the lizard tape and that lizard tape will allow us to then cut around it whereas these are going to slide around a little bit which is going to be a little bit annoying. So that's nice to do, I like the way they've done that. There's kind of three transfers, isn't there? there's the initial cut out of the paper, there's a transfer onto the sticky tape and then there's a transfer onto the lizard tape to make sure you get the right cut. You can check the measurements here and see if you're at the right scale. The other way to do it is just to push the buttons, like to put these pieces of paper over your button. You can see here, this one's fine. A little bit tricky on camera here. See here, that one's okay. Just gotta try and hold it. You can see it doesn't come all the way up the back of the button here, which is up to you. You can probably make that a little bit longer if you wanted. You could tailor that. The side pieces will be the easier way to show you if you've trimmed it right. You can see here, fits pretty well. We're a little bit overhanging at the back, but that might be just because of me trying to get the alignment right. And this is where the paper one's a little bit tricky. You kind of just gotta and hold it, that looks perfect to me hard and fingers in the way but you kind of get the idea here just to make sure just check them against yours when you're doing that and which mouse you're doing what we can also do on the sheet here is mock up the space or where you want to cut to make sure you get the maximum use out of your grip tape here like i said the razor vipe here probably one of the more greedy ones because of the palm wrist Kind of get the idea of how much tape you're going to have left over when you've done this. Again, a little bit tricky here, holding the paper down. So if we can get this other piece on here, this other side section without it overlapping. We can just about get that in, it'll be a slight angle. That's okay, we can deal with that. Right, and then you can get the palm rest up here, can we? Have to go a bit on the side, I think. A bit like a jigsaw here. You can kind of see how much extra you're going to have left. You're probably going to have a little bit here, probably enough for two side buttons, maybe another side piece if you needed it. Maybe if I was going to skip out on this, I probably wouldn't use the palm rest. Like I say, it didn't really bother me on the Viper. Um, it depends how far you want to go. We are going to put it on today though, with the palm rest. That's kind of where you're looking at the minute, I think, for some tape here. So you're not going to have too much left over, but you can have enough to do another set of buttons, which is probably where it's going to wear out. Or maybe on the side where your thumb is, that's probably the other part where it's going to wear. I doubt the palm rest is going to wear out, so have a little bit extra when you need that going forward. So what we need to do now is transfer these onto this gridded sticky tape. Again, you could get around with this. You could draw with a pencil or something if you wanted, or you could just wing it and chop around. I probably wouldn't do that. This is certainly going to be a bit of a process here. So now we're going to have to draw these over this grid tape. Then we'll stick that grid tape onto the, stick the grid tape onto this green grip tape, and then we can cut it out.
So they've been cut out now. They took a little bit of time. I suggest you get a nice sharp pair of scissors because you have to make sure these cuts are pretty tight. What we'll do now again is mock up. Just check you haven't cut away anything silly on here. Just check that these fit still reasonably well. This is where you can start to get a little bit of gaps. Like it's be difficult to get these always perfect. Pretty good though so far. Looking pretty good. You kind of see where it's going to fit here. I've got a, um, a scalpel as well to try and cut through these. And we're going to have to see how well that's going to do. Now we've got to try and cut them out. Now I'm using a cutting pad and I'm going to use a scalpel to do this. So I'm going to use a scalpel and we're going to use a pair of scissors and see which one is more effective here to give you an idea for yourself. So I'm just going to cut my fingers. Scalper there worked quite well. You saw a few little bits where it got hung up or it was pulling on the tape a little bit funny. They're not too bad. Let's fit these, see what they like, and then we'll try some scissors on the other parts as well and get an idea of what they like as well. See what the difference is in cutting wise. A few little bits here I've just got to pull off. Grip tape. Other than that's pretty clean cut to be fair. I'd leave the top tape on for the minute so you get an idea of where or which ones are which. You know, this is the left one. I'd just start it off like so and then I'd take the template covering off. So it makes it a bit easier for you to see here. What you're going to try and avoid is a bit of bubbling underneath. Put these on, you can see. It's a nice fit here, but it's a little bit overhung on the edge here, which I probably wouldn't like. Now, some people might prefer it to hang over the edge a little bit. It's going to come down to your preference. You can see it like hung over here a little bit. Not sure if that's because I've cut it like that or that's what the design is. But you could you could just trim that off with a standing knife if you wanted. It's up to you. And see how the right one fits. This is one of the things here, right? It's gonna come down to how good your cut is, how good the template was, um, it stayed in shape or not when you were cutting it. The buttons on the Viper are also a little bit concaved, so be a little bit tricky. No bubbles though, which is good. I expect the back back one here to get some, the back palm ref, so we'll have to cut some strategic slices in it so it lies a bit flatter, we'll see. This tape does feel good though, I do like lizard tape, man. The grip on this is nice, man. That looks pretty nice to be fair. I'm not hating that cut. I like, like if you only had the bat tape, you would have this bit here with like a bit of a it wouldn't quite cover it, it also might only cover a little bit there. The button here doesn't cover the whole button like that. That is grippy, man. <laughs> that feels quite nice, actually. Yeah. Looks quite good. So let's carry on with the other side bits. So we'll use some scissors now and chop out the other part. What we'll also do, which I didn't do at the start, is we'll measure the thickness of the sheet here.
0.7 mil with the backing on. Now we've cut some, we can try it without the backing. Can't stop being that thick there. Okay, 0.5 mil. You can probably crush it a little bit, but. We need a little bit of force to get it to go down to 0.5. It's probably more like 6 mil, I would say, but it could just be caliper difference, so close enough. Right, so like in this green color. Yeah, I know it's my fan of green, so let's try and get that just for a nice one. Let's try and scissor off one of these side ones and see what the which one if you need to be. Get your words out, Bob. And let's see if you're going to need a scalpel, whether you can do it with some decent scissors. These are sharp scissors, so. Okay, so scissor wise cuts well as well. We have done before with other lizard tape, but that came off pretty well. Chopping wise with those as well. Just make sure you've got a decent pair of scissors. Don't use some blunt kitchen ones because uh, it won't work well. Let's start this off again here. What you can do is it's got a good sticky back on this tape, so you can just keep repeeling it. I'm not sure exactly. And these templates Lizard have provided us there are pretty useful to be honest. A little bit overhang at the back here I've got. I mean, if you're being picky you could chop it, I might just cut it off. a decent fit I probably just want to trim a bit of this off now this is where it's gonna get tricky right is do I trim it with a knife or a pair of scissors I'm gonna to have to use a scalpel to get this tighter um, not ideal I think because you are gonna probably potentially cut some of your mouse there or you could just push it into the track which seems to be what's happening there into the back of the ridge okay I kind of don't mind that either Be careful you don't cut your plastic here. Right? You want those super crisp sides, which I kind of like. It's always gonna get it. It's always gonna be difficult to try and get it flush. Buttons here. Lucky for us, we're ready to provide some little gaps. Actually, now I push that in. That's not bad. A little bit iffy up here, I guess, for my cut. The other thing is because the Viper's got such close buttons here, you're gonna, probably going to struggle, as you would with any grip tape, to push in the side buttons. I have some additional 3D printed ones that I'm going to do a video on that Power Cable mod sent me, so I will uh, give those a whirl, and that might make them protrude a little bit better. But just be careful on the side grip tapes and the Viper that no matter which grip tape you use, it will uh, make them difficult to press the side ones. So let's go with the right hand side. I'm going to use the scissors on this one. So again, not too tricky with the uh, scissors here. We'll try it again on the rear pad with the scalpel, but too bad. I always start in the front corner of the Viper for grip tape. It's a little bit easier to line it up. Mm 
again, we've got plenty of stickiness here to keep repositioning it. Don't worry about peeling them back off if you don't get it right straight away. Obviously a few hundred times you're going to run out of stickiness, but got time here and there, you'll be fine to reposition. Residue wise, well, I know lizard skins don't generally leave any. We should be fairly good there. Again, my got a slight overhang on the back here, which is purely my fault due to the cutting that I've done. So you just have to treat that, but this side is slightly better on this edge here. So let's just use the scalpel again to push into the rear panel here, the Viper, to get that tidy, sharp edge. You don't have to do this. You could try and cut it. You could repeal it and try and cut it. Be very careful with scalpels. He says, do not stab your own hand. I just did that. Stab my own finger then. This green looks cooler. I am loving this green. Which is your favorite color? Put in the comments what your favorite color would be. If you could pick, what, what combo would you go for to fit your setup? It's quite a bit in this one. Back here. There we go. So now the left or right hand side there looks pretty tidy, that right hand side. It's a nice job. So far this is what the Viper looks like. Be nice again. Buttons are a little bit tricky to get hold of because of the flush. Now the final piece, the rear pad. This is the bit I wouldn't put on it. So if you didn't put the rear pad on, you could definitely get another set, I reckon, out of these. What do you reckon? Could we get another set? Quickly mock this back up. Give you an idea whether you can get more out of it. I'm pretty sure you could. I mean, I wouldn't use the rear pad a little bit narrow here. We are going to struggle there. But we've still got this rear pad, haven't we? So. Go again with the jigsaw. Mm, that'd be tight. Where's the other side piece? Where did I put it? That was ripped, I think. Did rip it? Yeah. Ripped it easy. Ripped it a little bit here. I'm just trying to see whether we can get. If you didn't use the rear pad, where you can get two sets of your grip tape out of this for a Viper. That's what I'd want to know. Because if you can, then this certainly helps. Long enough for that. Maybe we can get a different orientation of it. I think you're about to get another set of buttons and maybe one side piece. It's going to depend on... Oh, you did it, I guess. I'm certainly not looking, it certainly doesn't seem like I'm gonna be, oh, great now, nice one, Bob. Now you just rip the, uh, <laughs> the template. You definitely have to make some new templates, that's for sure. Or store these very well. Yeah, see it doesn't fit. So you'll probably get, definitely get a set of buttons out of it and you might get an additional side out of it. That's what I would say. Unless you can really optimize the layout. Damage my pad. So let's get the rear pad out now. Use a scalpel this time. Scissors have been good. I think you'll be fine as you use a decent pair of sharp scissors. So if I had a choice out the scalpel and the pair of scissors, I'd probably use a pair of scissors. That'd be my choice here. Just because sometimes it pulls a little bit on the corners with a scalpel on this tape. And then I might use a scalpel just to tidy up, but decent pair of sharps is on this. I think you're good to go. So that's what we're left with. Definitely get a pair of side buttons out of that. You might the lengths there for a replacement but you'll certainly get one of them's wearing out the buttons or the side you'll get one of those out of it so you don't need to buy another load right and now we've got this rear piece for the palm here i 
Don't know, interesting shape here. I'm just going to take the rear temple off it straight away this time first. Make it a bit easier to see here. It's not gone too badly here. I thought it might bump up a little bit, but the shape here they've given us from the lizard tape here is pretty good on the rear. Gives you a little bit of palm support. On the edges here, it's fitting in quite nicely. Probably a slightly tidy job on the palm here. It does, it does touch just where my palm's gonna be. Gotta say overall, this is pretty Damn sticky man. This is some sticky tape here. I do like what lizard skin have done here on these skins. I'll show you the rest now that we've done as well. I think if you don't mind paying a little bit premium here over some of the other tapes, this is certainly worth it. Certainly if you especially, especially if you like the lizard skin quality, as we know is very, very good. Um, I like the texture of this and it's gonna work out pretty well. It is super grippy, this thing. This thing is not going to slide out your hands with this tape on it. And I think the way they've allowed us to do the templates is cool. You can also pick and choose what grips you want to add in it. I probably wouldn't use the rear paint here. I probably wouldn't use the side buttons, the, the left and right mouse buttons, because I don't, but I certainly like the side tape here. Overall, I'm liking this tape, man. It is good. So I'll flick you through all the other ones that I've done. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Overall, it's good tape. And... I like the colour combinations they've given us on this as well. So thanks for watching this video. I'll flick you through the remaining ones here. Check out my other videos. I've done loads on hotlines, true grip tape as well. Take a look. I'll put some links at the end of the video. Thanks for watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon.
Bye-bye.